Hello ladies and gentlemen, Carter here. Got another video for you, another knife video. Um, this is the Kershaw Injection 3.5. 3.5 references the blade length on this uh, folding knife here. It also comes in a three inch blade, which would be the Injection 3.0, if you couldn't figure that out. Uh, very cool knife. It is moderately priced at uh, just under $40. It is made in China. Uh, but I think you'll be pretty impressed with what this knife has to offer, in my opinion. Uh, there's a few things that I'm not uh, super excited about on it, but uh, overall, it's pretty nice. So let's get into the brass tacks here. Uh, this nice, this nice, this nice knife was designed by Mr. Todd Rexford, a very respected custom knife maker. You've heard me talk about him before, in particular. His uh, collaboration he did with Zero Tolerance, the ZT801, which I'm a big fan of. That was a flipper, and this is all about the thumb studs, baby. Dual thumb studs, to be exact. Right there. Very nice design on those, by the way. I like the look of those. Full flat ground blade, 3.5 inches, like I mentioned. Steel is 8CR13MOV. I said that right, right? 8CR13MOV. Yeah, you know how sometimes you second guess things you say? I did that right there. Uh, it is bead blasted, which I don't like. Not a fan of bead blasting. I don't like the look of it, and uh, it increases the chance of rusting. So, not the biggest fan of bead blasting, but uh, what can you do? If you really don't like it that much, you can always take some low grit sandpaper to it and turn it into a satin finish, which, who knows? Maybe I'll do. I don't know. Thumb studs could be a problem get in the way but uh, anyways so bead blasted finish on that blade very useful shape excellent for piercing excellent for uh, for cutting and it looks really nice very clean whole thing looks clean which is why I bought the knife really uh, just like the look of it price was on point so I picked it up very smooth action on this baby very glass-like, as uh, people like to say. Super smooth. Lock-up is uh, good. Uh, nice and solid, tight, no blade play. Look at that pivot, by the way. Classic Todd Rexford right there. Really like that. Contoured G10 scales. You can see right there. Steel pocket clip, very stout. Um, very stiff pocket clip. And it doesn't have the biggest lip on it. So if you have pants that uh, have a big... I don't know, rim on the pockets, I guess you would say. You know, the lip that you actually have to slide underneath that pocket clip when you're trying to put it in your pants. Uh, call it a bulge, if you will. The bulge in your pants. If you have a big bulge in your pants, then you shouldn't be watching this video because that's kind of creepy and I don't think I appreciate that. Uh, but if you do have a big bulge on the rim of your pocket, you may have trouble with this knife getting it in and out of there, but otherwise I think you'll be fine. Lockup uh, is pretty late, however, being steel liners, which these are, um, I'm not too concerned with that. It should last plenty, plenty long. It's not going to be wearing out like a titanium pocket clip, pocket clip, a titanium liner possibly could. They're fairly thick, by the way, which does add to the weight. But being that this is not a huge knife with uh, particularly wide scales, it's not too heavy. Uh, actually, let's, let's take a look here at the exact weight. So, about 4.4 ounces. So not too heavy at all, especially when you consider the uh, steel liners. Uh, the blade thickness, we'll go ahead and do that. Do that right quick. It is just under 3 millimeters. Well... A little bit more than just under 2.9. Maybe a little thicker back here, actually. Yeah, so just over 3, the actual stock. Um, and then it's got the full flat grind, which uh, thins out this way as well, um, as well as down here. So very good piercing tip. Excellent cutting power on this knife. Uh, 8CR13 MOB, it's fine. You know, for the price point, I don't mind it. I've had good luck with it. Um, you know, I don't expect the world from it, but uh, it performs just fine. Plastic backspacer right here. And it's kind of got a nice, uh, kind of a custom shout-out. You can see 
kind of this uh, pyramided, I don't know what you'd say, um, radius or beveled piece right here that looks really cool. I really like the look of that. It looks like something you'd see on a custom knife. I wish that they would have followed through back here because this doesn't quite have the same effect um, as it does over there. But, uh, but anyways, um, looks good. The quality is good. Everything matches up. The fit and finish, as you would say, is uh, spot on. You know, there's no sloppiness in the detent. Flies open, locks up good. Um, I would definitely recommend this knife for the price point. Um, I think it's uh, pretty pretty on point. Um, if it had a stone wash finish on the blade and slightly earlier lockup, which is just be me being neurotic just me being neurotic. I have no basis to suspect that this lockup, it's one of those dumb things, you know, when you've been into knives so long, you get these weird preferences for things that don't even really make sense. Uh, but for some reason, I want to see this lockup like right there. But that's just me being neurotic. Um, but the, the bead blasted finish, I think genuinely is somewhat of a, a concern, albeit a small concern. It's definitely there. Uh, but other than that, it's a great, great little EDC knife I think would uh, serve you well. And you get to carry around a Todd Rexford design for $40, less than $40. That's pretty awesome. Okay, guys, that's it. A little overview of the Injection 3.5, uh, a great little knife from Kershaw, which is a great company. All right, guys, take it easy. I'm out of here.